Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make Maya's reagent, which under alkaline conditions is also known as Nestler's reagent. Distilled water, 1.36 grams of highly toxic mercuric chloride and 5 grams of potassium iodide will be needed. On the left you can see what mercuric chloride looks like and on the right you can see the potassium iodide. It would be possible to combine the powders in this volumetric flask followed by some distilled water. However, I added only the mercury chloride and dissolved the potassium iodide in a separate container. The reason for why I'm doing it in separate containers will be seen later on in the video. The flask was swirled a few times, but mercury chloride dissolves really slowly. With potassium iodide, it's a different story. You add it to a beaker and then you add some distilled water. Potassium iodide, after swelling the beaker only a few times, dissolves almost instantly. Let's get to the fun part. Potassium iodide solution is added to mercury chloride. As you can see, this red precipitate immediately crashes out. This is mercury 2 iodide. When we add even more potassium iodide solution than needed, something interesting is going to happen again. The red color is going to disappear. This is because the mercury 2 iodide reacts with excess potassium iodide to form potassium tetraiodomercurate. Potassium tetraiodomercurate is water soluble as you can see here and the red chunks that remain at the bottom are because there is still some unreacted or undissolved mercury chloride. I will allow the flask to stand overnight and by the next day these red chunks should have dissolved. The solution was then transferred to a suitable storage bottle which was then filled up to the 100ml mark. Yes, I could have filled up the container to the 100ml mark but I decided to go this way because I didn't want to fill it back. If you want to use it as Meyer's reagent which is used to test for alkaloids, the solution should be used as it is or in a slightly acidic environment. If you want to use it as Nestler's reagent, which is used to test for ammonium ions, some sodium hydroxide may be added to whatever you want to test beforehand because Nestler's reagent needs an alkaline environment. I am going to show you the use as both reagents in two future videos, but I am not going to pack it into today's video because I kind of failed with the test, so yeah, stay tuned. If you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to subscribe. If you liked today's video, make sure to like. And of course, I also have to thank all of my Patreons, which make it possible to film even more awesome projects. If you want to become a Patreon too, you get early access to new videos and also access to an exclusive series on phenyl acetic acid, which is going to take a very long time because I'm going to go over all the routes I know to make this reagent. Anyways, I wish all of you a great day. Stay tuned for the next videos. Bye.